But was a market reaction to this morning's numbers justified? Tim, what do you think? I, I think it was. Um, now, I said last night, I actually thought we were going to get a surprise. Today. I thought we were going to get better numbers than we got. So I, I'm at least trying to hedge my comment because I, I, I think we've all felt at least bad news is not just bad news, but it's really bad news based upon what we saw on August 2nd and that last July payroll number print that we got in August. So um, the question is, this number at 142 uh, doesn't scream recession. What it does do is it actually puts the balance of risk to the soft landing scenario, uh, I think, to the downside. And I think that's part of what you got here. I mean, I think you had uh, a whole lot of dynamics in this and where we're getting now the underperformance in this market, I think, kind of speaks to where where I think people should be most concerned about where you had the most exaggerated kind of moves. And again, I would just say um, what we've seen from the bond market um, is really fascinating because, uh, again, equities, credit don't tell you that they're worried about recession or anything close to it, whereas commodities and absolutely the bond market and that move in the two-year uh, and what we've seen, and we've talked about this disinflation of the yield curve, suddenly that CPI number next week, I know this sounds like a new concept, but get used to it. Um, we don't want that to be too weak. Actually, a little inflation. Deflation is obviously the devil for markets, and that's something that you see after bubbles of all kinds. So, I mean, it would be kind of weird to say, let's pull for some inflation, but I don't want to see uh, an overly soft inflation number. Yeah, it's interesting, though, because expectations were not that high, if you think about it, heading into the print. And if they had come out with a number that was sub 100,000, which is what last month was revised to, I think it was, uh, the number was, what, 89,000 or something like that, that would have been really bad. And I would have said what might have justified this sort of move. But what's really curious to me, last night we're sitting on the desk, we're talking about the CME FedWatch tool that was pricing in only a 40% probability of a 50 basis point cut. Well, that actually went down yeah. today, right? And so I just I think that's really interesting. So if, if markets were trying to bully the Fed into a 50 base uh, basis, like, cut. They didn't, they didn't get it today. So I didn't think the, the news was that bad. And you tell me if the CPI isn't as bad as people expect, then you have a situation where it's probably 25. And, and maybe, maybe investors are disappointed on September 18th because of that. But at the end of the day, I think yields, I think crude, I think the dollar, and I think maybe rates have kind of run ahead of what the, you know, what the Fed might do. I think the September effect is probably equally as important to all of this. Just seasonality. Just seasonality. I think, I think it's cause and effect and, and what's reality, what's perception. So everyone perceives this to be the worst month of the year. It becomes the worst month of the year. The Fed's probably going to cut 25 basis points. I don't think there's a reason to cut 50. Everything else is sort of in line. It's the worst month for the Sox and the market. And the entirety of, of Wall Street, right? So if everyone comes back from vacation, look at the desk. We're crowded now. No one's remote on a Friday. Everyone's back. So what do, the, what do people do when they're back at their seats? They sell stocks. They sit in front of their computer all day long. If they have liquidity, they use the liquidity to lighten up and rebalance. I don't want to make a big deal about it. I think it's more seasonality. 